All right, for the third part, I'm going to show you guys how to do an actual kind of color correction. We've got a project here that's been edited, and I'm going to start going through and doing color grading on it. I'm going to select color, of course, arrange for color, and I'm going to move my plate ahead here, and it selects the first clip. So I'm going to go to the Lumetri scopes here. On the first process, I always like to start working with tone before I start getting into color. So I'm going to open up my waveform and turn off the other scopes. And now if we take a look at it here, we've got uh, our IRE scale here, and uh, we can see that our image looks, it's like it's fairly dark. Most of the pixels look like it's uh, kind of below 40 there, big heavy concentration. And looking at the shot, it does look like it's a little bit underexposed. So a couple things that you want to do is you want to make sure that your highlights are not uh, hitting 100 and they're not peaking. This one it's not. You've got a little bit of crush from that light right here on the side, but it's uh, around, but it looks like it's around like between 80 and 90 IRE here, so it's not so it's not totally losing detail according to my waveform here. Uh, so let's go under basic correction and we'll start messing with this a little bit. Uh, but I want to dar define those the darker regions a little bit as 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 darkness here. But for the first of all, let's let's bring the exposure up. Let's fix the exposure a bit. Bring that up, and that's starting to look better. Now we're getting, starting to get some of those uh, pixels here in the in the mid range, and we got a good exposure on the face. Then I'm going to mess with the whites a little bit, the tippy top of the scale, and see if you want those uh, whites to really pop. I'm going to bring them right right up to 100. I don't want to crush them around 100 too much, or it's going to blow them out too much, but just to define those a little bit. Uh, now we can grab our darks. I want my darks that are above 10. Usually, want your darks somewhere around like 5 IRE. It just really depends on what you're doing, but you don't want to touch on zero. If they're on zero, you're going to bring them up. So right now I'm going to bring the the blacks, which is the bottom of the scale here. I'm going to grab that and drag it to the left till it's about uh, hitting around 5 IRE. And uh, let's take a look at our before and after and check my basic correction. There's before, there's after, and I'm liking that. So once I get that set, I might want to do a little bit of contrast to this. So let's grab our contrast and drag that to the right and spread apart uh, the highlights and uh, the low lights there and uh, get a little bit of contrast. But I'm noticing it's kind of crushing my white, so I'll back that off a little bit and bring those back down. And there we go, maybe a little bit more exposure. And I like that. Okay, let's work on our color balance. So first of all, I worked on tone, got the tone exactly where I wanted to, and now I'm going to right click and go to RGB Prayed. Take away my light waveform here. If you're working on two monitors, by the way, you can just have one full monitor uh, with all your scopes up so you're not sitting here right clicking and changing your scopes constantly. It's, I'm just doing it so you can see the scopes a little, little bit better. Looking at these here, it looks like it's got a bit, bit of a push in the red. And looking at the low lights, look at the how the pattern down here, how the red is higher than the blue. So this is looking more reddish than it is uh, bluish. So I might correct that a little bit by grabbing my temperature slider and dragging it over to the blue. And notice what it's doing. The, the, my blue already has some peaking highlights here. So so maybe I don't want to do that. I could grab a, use a little bit more control by using the curves here. So I'm going to double click, clear that, and go to curves. And under curves here, I'm going to select my reds. I'm going to select my red here, and I'm going to grab kind of like around like maybe 50 or 40 here, maybe in the mid region right about here, and bring that down. And notice how that just drops a little bit of red out of that image there in the mids. Let's look at it before and after. There's before. There's after, and that has chilled out the red a little bit. That's looking better. And now I'm going to go to blue because this is, it looks like it's just peaking at the very tip there. So hit, hit blue. I'm going to put a point here in the middle so it doesn't touch the middle part. And then I'm going to pull this down just to kill that at the top. And look at that little t tippy top of the, of the blue just come down off the top there. So now it's not crushing so much. Okay, so my first step, I did tone. My second step, I worked with uh, balance. And it looks like it's kind of crushing a little bit on the, on the blue and uh, the green. So I could actually go to curves and bring up the blue scale on the bottom a teeny bit and get the and then I could go to green and bring the up the green so they're kind of hitting around five IRE as well and that pulled a little bit of green and blue out of the out of the shadows there so that's looking that's looking pretty good I like that all right so the third thing I'm going to work on is saturation I'm going to right click and go to vector scope YUV here and looked at my vector scope and look at the blooming uh, saturation that I've got in this image. Some of the saturation is almost to these limits here, and really uh, where I'm seeing that is especially in the in the skin color here. In the skin color, once again, we're getting it in the skin, and also look at this right here. We're getting it right here, a big peak of red right there. That looks very very saturated to me. So first of all, I'm going to work on global saturation. Maybe we can bring the saturation down overall. So I'm going to grab saturation and just drag it back a little bit and make a little less saturation. I don't want to take too much color out of it. There's the reds that bleed that's bleeding, not not everything else. I brought the general saturation down. Now we're going to go to curves. 
And under curves, we can go down and we can see if we can do it with this. If not, we can do it with the secondary. But let's, let's try it with this first. Actually, I might try both just to see what we get. Uh, but this is going off right toward the red. So I'm going to click on red down here and it creates these three nodes there. And I'm going to grab this middle one and drag it downwards. And let's see if it's actually taking a look at that on the vector scope. It is actually sucking that red in there. So I'm going to drag that down. Maybe not too much, just a little bit, just so it's not peaking so badly. So let me show you undo. Watch, watch the red here when I hit undo. See that red glow? And then I'm going to redo and watch this and see what it did there. It just killed that so it's just not blooming red. We still have a nice red color there, but it's not blooming red. Let's go up to our effect controls. And here is the Lumetri panel. Uh, here's the Lumetri effect for this clip that I just fixed. Let's hit the effects and turn it off and on and look at the difference there. Look what we've done to this shot and how it looks so much better. And we might even want to kind of finish up by going down and going to vignette and adding just a little teeny vignette around the corner here. And oh, let's drag it to the left a little bit. Just darken these edges here, just a teeny, teeny bit. So watch this, there's before and there's after. And look at the difference. It makes it look like it kind of falls off into the dark back here and adds a little bit more depth to it. So as we play for, through this, it cuts from one shot to the next. And now we're going to work on this shot here. So the next shot. So let's go to our scopes and let's go to our waveform. And we're going to work on tone and we're going to repeat this process. Let me go through this one more time here, the kind of the step process. Let's bring up the exposure a little bit. Looks like that kind of my mids are kind of need to be brought up on her a little bit. I'm going to bring that up just a little bit to those whites. Now I don't even have to increase the whites. Those whites are kind of getting there where they're popping a little bit. And let's get our uh, darks and bring those down a little bit. Let's see, I don't want to bring them down too much, maybe right about there. And, uh, and that one actually looks, looks pretty good. And now we're going to add a little bit of contrast, stretch those out a bit, and make it a little contrasty. Here's before, and there's after, so that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to go to RGB Parade. And let's look at the let's look at the color balance next. And on this one, it's very similar. It looks like the red color the, looks like the red's a little uh, dominant over the blue. So I'm going to go to curves. I'm just going to skip right to curves this time because this has uh, um, colors stretching all the way from top to bottom. So I'm going to go to reds and I'm going to bring down the reds a little bit in the mid somewhere. Let's see where, what this does right about there. And it looks like the greens are also kind of up there as well. So I'm going to select green and just bring down the mids and the green and get this thing so it looks a little more balanced. And that's looking a little bit better there. So look at before and after, and we've taken a lot of that red hue out of there. So the next we're going to work on saturation a bit. So let's go to our vector scope, look at our saturation. We've got kind of a bloom toward the red and toward the yellow here. So we can probably just correct this. And it's not too bad, not a heavy concentration. So we can probably just go to basic correction and bring the saturation down just a little bit. And there we go. Let's see if that looks like it matches as it plays from one clip to the next. Looks like this shot has a little bit more magenta in it, and those two aren't necessarily aren't matching perfectly. It looks like this one has a little bit more green in it, and then this then as it goes to the next shot, this one has a little bit more magenta. So I kind of decide which one I want to go with. Do I want to go with this shot and pull out the green, or go with this shot and uh, keep the magenta? What we can do is we can go to our comparison view, which is this little icon right there. If you don't have this little icon, you can hit plus and grab your comparison view and drag it and drop it down here, which I already have. So I'm going to hit cancel and hit comparison view. And it brings up this little side-by-side uh, -side thing that we showed you before, where we have the clip that we are correcting, and then we have uh, our little timeline viewer here. We can skip through this and get to the clip that we want to compare it to. Let's move this in a little bit because that fade-in happens, and let her get to this point there. Let me move my mouse over, hit tilde, so we can kind of compare these two. Like I said, this looks like it's got a little bit of a green greenish into it, and this has a little bit of magenta. So actually, on this clip, we could kill the magenta a little bit and take this toward the green just a teeny bit, and then go to this clip and move this, the viewer here, the comparison viewer, to the next clip. And then let's put a little bit more magenta in this one, so we're kind of meeting in the middle a little bit. And there we go. Those look pretty, pretty matched there. That looks pretty good. So now I can turn the comparison view off and play through and see how it looks. And play through and see how it looks. Now she stands up, does the cut, and they look like they're matching a lot more. Just so you get the process down here, I'm going to go cover it one more quick time. If you have to, or if you want to skip forward past this, you can, but I'm going to go through this one more time just to kind of make, solidify this. So once again, waveform, work on tone first. The exposure looks a little bit low, so I'm going to bring up the exposure here. Uh, so it brightens up the face. Uh, I can bring up the whites here, so it's barely meeting. I'd say if you got whites that are crushing, you grab the whites and drag them down so it goes below 100 IRE. Uh, as we grab the darks, we're going to find darks here and bring it down a little bit, right around 5 IRE. That's a little too much, right about there. 
Then we're going to work on color balance, bring up our RGB, and looks like we've got some prominent red there. Uh, so we're going to go under curves. Like I said, you can usually get away with it by using your little white balance slider up here. But if that's not working, if it's uh, not, if it's not like, like like I said, I've got a large spread here where you got stuff at the bottom and the top. So it, it kind of makes this, when you drag it to the, uh, if you start adding more blue, it's kind of crushing the blues at the top. So usually you can use this to do your basic balance. But I'm, in this instance, I do have to use curves. Go to red. We're going to bring the red down a little bit right around this region kind of get those matched up and now look at the difference here's before after that's looking good and I like the balance on that the green is kind of bottoming out there so I'm going to grab the green and bring up the green channel just a little bit at the bottom there we go and then bring it down in the mids just a teeny bit to get that balanced and there we go let's go to our saturation now on our vector scope Right, just go. We got this big poke of uh, of yellow that's uh, poking out out here. So, and I'm not sure what that is. I'm looking for something yellow in there. It might be that little light right there. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to go down to the bottom and select my yellow, and bring that back and see. And that is killing that that little spike of yellow that we have there. We could just kind of bring down the general saturation as well. Right about there, maybe that looks good. And uh, I did forget to do some contrast on this. So let's add a little bit of contrast. And that kind of brings down the exposure in the mids. Go to curves, use the white here, and just bring up, let's do this where we just see it bringing up on our face, right about there. And now I need to bring the exposure down just a little bit. There we go. Now as we cut from one shot to the next, and then just add a little bit of a vignette. Just a subtle one, right about there. And now let's play through. It cuts from this shot. Then add a little bit of vignette here. Kind of darken up those edges a little bit. And as we play through from one shot to the next, something a little bit different. So once again, let's look at our comparison view and look at the colors here. This looks like it's got maybe a little bit too, little too much magenta, so I can just kill that a little bit. I go into basic correction and adding it for the opposite from... And looks like I need a little bit more blue in it. And there we go. And that looks like it's, it's matching a bit more. So as we play through that, let's turn off the turn off the comparison view. As we play through it, see if it looks like it matches from shot to shot. Okay. To do the rest of this, you don't have to grade every single individual shot. If you have shots that are, it cuts away, then it cuts back to the shot that's exactly the same. Like as we arrow down here, let's move down to this shot right here. This one we've already graded. We've already graded it right here on the timeline. So we don't have to redo this thing all over from scratch. What we can do is move down to this clip here, go up to the effect controls, select the Lumetri color panel, select the Lumetri color effect, do control C or command C and copy it, move down to this clip and do command V selected and paste it. And there we go, and that's finished. And I can do that throughout the entire project and copy and paste, copy and paste on shots that are exactly the same. And then even if you copy and paste it and it's not exactly the same, you can go over here and tweak a little bit until you get it just right. And that is the basic process of doing color grading in Premiere Pro. There's one more thing you can kind of do to finalize it. It's often used as a technique with color grading. Uh, and it is we'll be adding a look to your entire scene. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to move down uh, to my project window. Let me tilt it over this so I can bring it full screen. And I hit on my new item here and hit new adjustment layer. I hit OK and it creates an adjustment layer, generates an adjustment layer into my project window. So what I'm going to do with that adjustment layer is I'm going to drag it up. I'm going to drop it on my timeline. And uh, this is just one scene here, but I'm just going to drag it over the entire scene. You can also drag it over your entire movie if you wish. And uh, now what, what this adjustment layer is going to do is it's going to affect everything below it. So we've already done the color grading on, on the stuff down below. So now I can go up to my uh, creative panel. And I can arrow through this. I've got this selected, so it's going to add that look to everything below it. Now I can find a look that I like. I can arrow through this and find something that I like. And let's say I like that look right there. It's this uh, Fuji Kodak look here. So all I have to do is single click on this. And it adds that look to the adjustment layer, which affects everything below it. So as I go from shot to shot, you can see that look's been added there. And if we don't like that, if it's too intense, we can take the intensity down there so it's just maybe about like 65 percent or so uh you know the faded film look a little bit sharpen the image a little bit and maybe boost the vibrance i don't know just some things to adjust that adjustment layer so if we turn this adjustment layer off it turns it off for the entire grade there let's intensify it more just so you kind of see what it's doing there turn it on and off and there's our look for our movie we still kind of have that contrast, but we have this faded film look as well. We've got a unique look for our entire project. 
And you can do this scene by scene, or you can do it for the entire movie and uh, get, give it a different look for each scene after you've done your basic color grading. So well, that's it on, the, on the, the process. Those are the basics of color grading inside of Premiere Pro. If you have any questions, please post them. Let me know. And if you want to stick around and watch at the end, I will post this little um, edit here that uh, I'll post this little edit here that we use in the example. And you watch this little short film. So thanks for watching. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>